I would like to thank the Academy, darlings, for the Oscar. Yes, Mama, this gorgeous, elongated, get your minds out of the gutter uh, tea uh, container. Hold on, let me, uh, because I actually need some tea because we're going to be spilling tea. So let me, ooh. Oh, the Oscars are dripping. Uh, I made my Oscar <laughs> lose a drop. Um, so anyway, here's a till, you know, let me just pour some tea. Mm. And um, let me blend you guys in to the conversation. I live stream every Saturday. Join my main channel and let's talk Will Smith's slap. Now listen to this, you guys. Hi, everybody in the chats. Cheers. Ooh. Oh, I burned myself. Okay, this is too hot. Okay. Now, we've all seen it. Yes, get your popcorn. So I've watched so many reports about this. I've waited a couple of days to give my sauce into this whole shenanigan of a situation. Of course, I was watching the Oscars live as they were happening. Of course, I saw the slap. I was like, why is the audio not happening all of a sudden? Why is the audio gone? Like, oh, wait, was this all planned? This must have been all planned. And of course, the whole conspiracy theory of it all. Yes, it was planned. Yes, it was planned. But then it wasn't planned. Was it planned? It wasn't planned. Then I go to Twitter because, you know, Twitter has all the dirt on everyone. And of course, Twitter already had a video from Japan because the Japanese, honey, they don't censor nothing. Well, they censor a lot, but not that. Um, so you get to hear everything on the Japanese version of the Oscars where Will Smith says all those nasty profanities to Chris Rock. And uh, Chris Rock is, well, he slapped him. He slapped him, but on the microphone, it sounded like a punch. So that's why I thought this was fake, right? But then, like, he sits down, he's like, got da 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 ba ba da out of, you know. And I and I was thinking about Latrice Royale from RuPaul's Drag Race when she said, get those nuts out of my face. And I just saw Latrice Royale, but it was Will Smith. And he was not saying, get those nuts out of my face. She was actually saying, uh, he was actually saying, get my wife's, keep my wife's mouth out of your bleep mouth. And then he repeated it twice, you know, and I was like, oh, how vulgar. Oh, dear. I mean, first of all, the G.I. Jane joke. So the G.I. Jane joke. And we know Chris Rock made uh, a whole documentary on black women and their hair and how sensitive topic that is. And then to make a joke like that, he who hath made a whole documentary about how that's not something to jock to, to jock about, to joke about is like, hmm. But it's the Oscars. He made the joke. Uh, she could have defended herself too. She, The lady is strong and powerful. She was wearing Jean-Paul Gaultier, haute couture, by the way. So listen, if a chick wears Jean-Paul Gaultier, haute couture, in poison green, might I add, she can defend herself. Okay, the fact that Will Smith was laughing at Chris's joke, then looked at her, and then Jada was like, not having it, and then he's like, oh, I messed up, she's gonna see me laughing, she's gonna get upset with me, let me defend her and show the world what a man I am. I don't know for what reason he did it, but he did what he did. First laughed at it, realized that Slap goes back, sits down, says profanities to Chris. Chris is like, okay, let's get the show moving. Uh, this was blah, 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 bad, but you know, this is gonna go down in television history, and he just went on with the show, congrats, Chris. It's the Oscars, you guys. Um, the reason why these profanities are usually not, not with Will Smith, the reason that these bad jokes are made to roast the nominees or their spouses or whatever have you, it's actually the reality of it all is because you have a bunch of millionaires, in some cases billionaires, sitting in a room giving each other prizes. I mean, this is the most elitist, <laughs> self absorbed, snobby, snotty self-indulgent award ceremony you could ever possibly envision on this planet because it's literally rich people giving each other awards and money and becoming even richer i mean so so usually what happens to these comedians that are either moderating the show or that are invited to present an award but are comedians and they write a joke or two why why do they roast these people they do it for us for the mere peasants darling that sit at home Yes, the plebeians, that is us. 
that are sitting at home to make those rich Oompa Loompas appear more, dare I say, likable and uh, relatable to us. Hmm. So if, if these comedians, who are also in on the joke, drop the roast towards these rich people that are giving each other awards, then we feel better about ourselves at home. That's basically, bottom line, the only reason why these jokes are done. Okay, they're done to make us mortals feel better about ourselves. See it a little bit as if you were going to the Colosseum and you have the gladiators fighting and like you have all the plebeians sitting on the weekend seeing the gladiators kill each other so that they can appease their need for their, 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 their so that they can quench their thirst for blood because they're just, you know, living under poor conditions and they have their masters treating them like crap. So it was a concept that the Romans invented called Panem et Circensis, which means bread and circus to appease the masses. Same happens at pathetic ceremonies as the Oscars, where the rich give, uh, you know, accolades and money to the rich. And so they throw in these jokes to make us peasants feel better about ourselves. Well, Will wasn't having any of that. He was like, no, I'm above all this. Uh, how dare you? How dare you? Now, update, fast forward to today as we're filming this live segment. Uh, Will has, I don't know if somebody in the chats wrote it, but Will Smith has allegedly... Uh, left the academy or the associate, whatever it's called. He basically made a statement that he's leaving the academy. He's no longer a member of the academy. I thought to myself, so he did it before they could kick him out so that he kind of saves his face. This isn't for me even about the slap of Chris Rock. This is about the fact that this dude stole the show for everybody else. Nobody else got a chance to shine because nobody else... Do you even remember who won the Oscar? Who's the best female? Who? What's the best movie? I don't remember anything. I mean, it was all boring anyway, but like, I only remember this thing. And that is such an egotistical move to make. I really, very cringe, my humble opinion. Now, some people are speculating that he was trying to defend his honor, his own, because Jada in some interviews together with him allegedly, you know, made fun of him, of his sexuality... The topics have been thrown around. Everything I'm saying is just alleged for entertainment, entertainment purposes only. But this is what has been implied several times. And hence the whole conversation of, you know, her having an affair and then with who? Yada, yada, open marriage, blah, blah, blah. And now he's like the man standing up for himself. Ugh. I mean, you know, uh, it just, I can't. So, um, you know, <laughs> Amy Schumer called Kristen Dunst a seed filler. Well, yeah, I mean, unfortunately she has been for so many years. Uh, now she's back in the game in Hollywood, but you know, she has been out of the game for quite some time. I do love her though. She's a great actress, but, um, yeah, Jesus says limp noodle. More than limp, little noodle. A tiny noodle, a short noodle. Oh, yeah, a short noodle. Um, oh, and then also, you know, and then of course the tea spills. Even, oh, honey, the tea is hot. Um, so allegedly a seed filler, a, a real seed, seed filler at the Oscars, spilled the beans to the media about how... Uh, they are treated like real like shit. Like they're not allowed to talk to any stars. They're not allowed to look them in the eyes. They're not allowed to converse and interact with anybody. They have to be literally puppets. They can breathe, but they're not allowed to talk. Uh, and they're not allowed to talk to anybody. They're not allowed to ask anything. And, uh, you know, done. And once your position has been filled and you, that you're not needed anymore, you're thrown out. So... And, and people are appalled. For, and I'm like, this is this is how it's been for decades, for centuries. Like, well, now people are appalled. Like, now they're waking up. Uh, but it's normal in Hollywood. Extras are told that, too. If you're an extra in a movie in Hollywood, if you're an extra in a show, they're going to also tell you most of the time, don't look the stars into the face. Not the stars in the sky. The Oompa Loompas that are cast as stars in a show. 
and don't talk to them. You're not allowed to talk to them. You're not allowed to da 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 to them. So it's all ridiculous. And now the slap happened. So allegedly Will Smith's like, okay, I'm leaving the academy. I'm like, mm hmm. Yeah, you are. Well, so apparently the uh, the Oscar people, the producers, after he slapped Chris, asked him. And this is a funny choice of words. So in a letter later on, the Academy Post said, you know, we asked Will Smith to leave, but he didn't want to leave. But what I've heard from other sources, this is all alleged, obvi, is that they did not ask him to leave. The producer suggested that it might be a good idea for him to leave. They did not say, can you please leave? They said, what do you think <laughs> if you left now? And then he said, no, I don't think that's a good idea. And that's that. They didn't. So allegedly, they didn't ask him to leave. Allegedly, they just suggested it, which is a very different thing. But they're kind of reformatting the whole thing in their letter, making it sound like they asked him to leave and he didn't want to. Because we all saw the in-between segments, which were also filmed during the commercial break after the slap. Will Smith talking to Denzel, then talking to that Oompa Loompa Bradley Cooper. <sighs> Ever after A Star is Born, Bradley Cooper really was just dead to me. I mean, not that he was alive before, but after, I'm just like, oh my God, what a tool. But anyway, so the tool spoke to Will. Denzel spoke to Will. And Will was like, yeah, listening to them. And, you know, somebody was filming from afar, but it was just like there was nobody. There was no security around. There was nobody there to say like, hey, dude, you've been aggressive like Lee. Also, allegedly, Chris Rock did not file any official police report. I mean, the police were apparent allegedly there, but he did not want to. But also allegedly, Chris did not want to press charges. Um, Chris, shortly after that, had a show somewhere. I don't know if in Chicago or where. Apparently got standing ovations. Everybody loved him, yada, yada. So he's like the star now. He's like the guy who kept the show going. Everybody's so proud of him. I'm not proud of him. I I think I I'm not proud of either one of the two. I think both are bullies in their own way. Um both are people I would not want to work with because one kind of collects information on you to then shade you publicly and the other one if you say something he don't like he's going to hit you. So I'm like girl bye, but uh, but also um like what's up with Chris not saying anything? I mean, he could have like said like Instead of just trying to play the cool guy, be like, oh, this is going to go down in the history of television, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you should have said something else, maybe. I would have said, yes, because I can compose myself quickly. Maybe because gay people have already learned how to deal with uh, aggression and we snap back really quick. So I'm not shocked, unfortunately, because this is the hateful world we live in. I'm not shocked when hate is shown to me uh, actively or thrown at me actively so but I bounce back really quickly because I've been trained to all my life right I would have said then and there I would have said like hey uh, apologies to calling your wife G.I. Jane too because she shaved her head yes we know the alopecia story uh, but um, hitting me in public um, really shows lack of character weakness and well, I guess there's no need to joke about you anymore because you just did yourself dirty. You ju you're, you've just become the biggest prank of yourself to yourself. You're welcome, Will Smith. That's what I would have said. Now, <laughs> but of course, he was kind of, he felt really bad in that moment. He was like standing there. And then there was another shot of Chris Rock in the in between segments, right? He was like waiting on the side. He was looking really lost and nobody was comforting him. That was also really sad to see because he was left alone. Nobody, nobody of all of these rich Oompa Loompas came to his aid, to his assistance. Nobody came to ask him how he was doing. Instead, what happened after a couple of, I guess, 20 minutes to one hour had passed and they announced the winner of the Best uh, Actor Award of the Year, Will Smith wins. All of these people that were so shocked that Will Smith slapped Chris Rock, now they gave him standing ovations. I'm like, wait, hold on. You're giving him standing ovations, but he just, like, there was violence going down for it. And now you're like, 
I mean, they also gave standing ovations to Harvey Weinstein. <clears throat> yes, but no, says, did you just fresh Prince a fly? Oh, you best believe I did. Except the fly won't live to tell <laughs> the tale. <laughs> Unlike Chris Rock, this fly will not live to tell the tale. Oh, Summer Nights. Harvey Weinstein wins so many awards w while he was active. Of course he got standing ovations. Best buddies with Oprah Winfrey. Everybody loved him. One of the rare people who dared speak out against him, Courtney Love. Bless her heart. Courtney Love, she's such a rebel. I love her to bits. I love Courtney Love. I respect her so much. Courtney Love was the only one. She gave an interview a couple of years. This is way before the allegations started. This is way before the Me Too movement. Courtney Love was asked on a red carpet somewhere, like, oh, what do you like think about Harvey Weinstein? I think she was going to a premiere of a movie uh, that was produced by him, by Miramax. And then she said, oh, Harvey, just only thing... She literally, I mean, literally, I'm going to paraphrase now, but she said something. Um, they said, what about Harvey Weinstein? She said, just be sure to never go up to his room if you meet him in a lobby and he asks you to have a drink with him. You don't believe me? Look it up, as Madonna would say. Oh, oh honey, I've been to a Madonna concert where Madonna herself on stage, I'm witness to this. He was present at that concert and she said on stage, oh, somewhere in the, uh, in the crowd here today is Harvey Weinstein, who also helped me a lot in my career. I just want to say I love you so much. This was also way before the Me Too movement. Madonna loved him, too. They all loved him until it wasn't comfortable for them to love him. So don't trust Hollywood. You know, it's a bunch of rich people rubbing each other's backs to maintain their position of power and, and riches. Just saying. Now, as for this slap situation, I couldn't care less, really. I, <laughs> I just think to myself, you know, maybe some people are going to wake up now and there's going to be a little bit more scrutiny towards whatever uh, the Oscars are or not. Um, I don't condone violence, physical violence, no matter what you say. Uh, Jada could have defended herself also. She didn't. Instead, she just rolled her eyes and then Will Smith, like, attacked. I don't condone violence. I don't think there's anything you could say. You're expecting to be roasted when you go to these awards. You're expected to be roasted. And if you can't take a roast, then, honey, that's not a job for you. Then why don't you go back home, become... Just like the trolls on Instagram, on YouTube. Become an invisible keyboard warrior, Will Smith. That's my uh, suggestion to you. Quit the acting career. Go home. Sit at your keyboard. Create a faceless profile. And become a keyboard warrior. And go and attack everybody and everything from the commodity and comfort of your own home. Why, whilst you're avoiding to deal with anger management issues. That's what I think you should do. <sighs> Hollywood is a pure joke. Short people with a huge ego, says Louis. Yes, but no, says Ricky Gervais was amazing hosting the Golden Globes. Jack says, well, I don't know. A roast is a roast, but an awards show is an awards show. Jack, I don't know if you missed the beginning of my video where I explained why they roast people during award shows like this one, but there's a reason why they do. Um, Jesus says, Will is a sister, allegedly. I didn't want to touch base on the uh, homosexuality allegations because some people say that they absolutely do not believe that that's true. Some people think that that is the case. I'll, again, I couldn't care less because... <laughs> I don't, like, like, what can we do with that? Like, well, how, <laughs> who can, how can we... Like, sorry, but like, girl. <laughs> and just for the record, FYI... Uh, one of the hosts, was it Wanda, Wanda, no, who was it? Which one of the hosts? Wanda Sykes? No, who, which one was it? That was like, took out of the audience all the 
hot looking actors, which I also I was like, oh, that, those are the choice for the hot, hot actor girl. Get them away from me. And then she kind of manhandled all of them, touched them and said, hey, we got to do those mm, COVID tests in the back. I'm like, imagine if a man was standing on stage, a comedian man moderating the show and called the sexiest women to the stage and groped them. You think that would fly? You think that would not have been embarrassing and offensive? But the woman did it to the men. And that was okay. I mean, it, it, the whole show. She, Regina Hall. But thank you, KDF. By the way, Regina Hall is freaking awesome. That joke was terrible. But she's awesome. I love her in Black Monday. Oh my gosh, she's amazing. I also loved her in uh, Nine Perfect Strangers with Nicole Kidman. Nine Perfect Strangers, what's it called? And she's such a different character in both TV shows. Like, she can change so well. She's amazing. I'm a huge fan of hers. Just forgot her name. But I really like her a lot. Regina King? No, Regina Hall. Regina King or Regina Hall? Well, whatever. Her. <sighs> okay, now. The jokes are all dumb. They're all sexist, they're all stupid, but, you know, like, quite frankly, the most inoffensive of all of them was Chris Rock calling Jada G.I. Jane too. Have you guys seen Demi Moore in G.I. Jane? She was hot. And alopecia or no alopecia, that shaved head on Demi Moore in G.I. Jane was hot. And she was buff and strong and powerful. She was hot. So, it's not like he's telling Jada... Oh, you're gonna you're gonna be Shrek. By the way, Chris Rock was the donkey in Shrek. Let's just not forget about that Oompa Loompa moment. But I'm like, he, he calling her a sexy beast. GI Jane too. I'm like, oh hell yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> if the right person comes in and hires me for the role, uh, thank you, Chris, for giving me and Hollywood the idea to make G.I. Jane 2, and yes, I would be a perfect actress for the role. You see what I mean? You can twist anything in the positive direction. I would have said, oh my god, Chris Rock, thank you so much. Like, this is so freaking cool. Yeah, what a brilliant idea. Somebody produce G.I. Jane 2. I want to be G.I. Jane 2. Chris could have opted for Uncle Fester, says yes, but no. <laughs> she did not, she didn't look like Uncle Fester. Plus, she was wearing Gautier, darling. Don't mock Gautier. <laughs> Chris Teacher says, I thought it was Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy was the donkey. No. The donkey's Eddie Murphy? Really? It sounds like Chris Rock. It was Eddie Murphy in Shrek, not Chris. <laughs> Everybody's correcting me. Well, give me that. In my dreams, it was Chris Rock. Wait, so who did Chris Rock voice? He did some cartoon, you guys. I'm sure he did. Don't tell me he didn't do any cartoon ever. What cartoon did he do? He did voice somebody over. Come on. Chris Rock, I'm sure he voiced somebody over. I feel bad for Chris. G.I. Jane is not a bad roast. Demi was so hot. I'm telling you, Summer Nights, Demi was amazing. <laughs> oh, he did Madagascar? Uh, he was a zebra? Okay, donkey, zebra, potato, potato, tomato, tomato. He was some animal in a cartoon. Give me a break. No, but right, right. Okay, a zebra. Give me a break. It's a zebra donkey. It's all the same to me. Just, you know. So, G.I. Jane 2. I call that a compliment, quite frankly. What are we talking about here? Honestly. Honestly. In, in Anna Delvey style, I, I, would, I would... You know what? If uh, Jada had some sense of humor, she, <laughs> if I were Jada... I would I would stand up and look back at Chris Rock, a.k.a. the zebra from Madagascar, and I would say, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for you. You look poor. <laughs> you look like a poor zebra. <laughs> if you know, you know what I'm talking about. <coughs> oh, my God. Whew, I lost another filler uh, in the fan, obvi. Uh, it was Joan Rivers making that joke. Would she have laughed? Um, 
it, Joan Rivers, they would have never invited Joan Rivers to the stage at the Oscars. When Joan Rivers passed away, and I'm never going to forgive the Academy for that either. When Joan Rivers passed away, they did not give her an in memoriam moment that year. I was so pissed. You know, like they gave Betty White a huge moment in the in, in memoriam, but they didn't give Joan Rivers any moment. And he, and she was she was she was an actress. So anyway, a not very VIP, not very exclusive Anna Del Yeah, 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 yeah. Not not very VIP. No. Uh they should have been glad he didn't make a cheating joke. Jada for Megamind. Oh my god. Jesus. <coughs> Jesus. I can't with y'all. Jada for Megamind. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Straight to jail. Jesus. Straight to jail. If <laughs> If it were a white man slapping Chris Rock, would he have kept the Oscar? A white man just would have never, because why I think white men are so influenced by this whole racial issue in America that in Hollywood, a white man would never dare. Never. Now, the question if if the white man made the G.I. Jane joke about Jada, would have Will Smith slapped a white man? First question. Second question. If it was a woman, if it was a black woman who made the joke at Jada, would, would Will Smith have slapped a black woman? Third question, if it was a white woman that made the joke about Jada, G.I. Jane 2, would have Will Smith slapped a white woman? These are the questions that I would really love answers to. But as I said before, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for you. Subscribe to my channel. Bye, bitches.